But I'm saying it's in addition to that, it's also what you're actually feeling, which is being transmitted out to the world itself. So for many of you, you have a life that doesn't represent how you truly feel inside of you. Does it? Like how many of us really want to be in the job that we're in? So when you're in that job, doing that job, do you actually, are you feeling great about doing the job? Probably not. But God can feel that emotion from you, even though no one else around you might be able to sense that emotion from you. God senses all of your emotions as you have them. How can he survive? How can God survive? <laughs> well, God is so infinite in love that every single one of your emotions, even if they are in the depths of despair, and a lot of humanity is in the depths of despair at the emotional level, that emotion God feels but does not feel resonant with. Do you see the difference between being resonant with an emotion? Now, let me, let me illustrate. This soul, you can think of it like a tuning fork, if you like, that's vibrating at a certain frequency. When it has a feeling, it vibrates at a certain frequency. It's just like a soprano singer singing at a certain frequency. Now, there might be certain items in the room that vibrate at that same frequency and they resonate with that soprano singer. And it's the same with your soul. Your soul is vibrating constantly at a certain frequency and that is the sum total of your soul condition. And every single person around you will sense the bits of the frequency that also their soul vibrates at. And this is what causes a lot of attractions. Does that make sense? From a physical level. So here, my soul is vibrating at this certain frequency because of all the different emotions that I have in me at this moment. Your soul is vibrating at a different frequency with all the different emotions you have in you at a certain moment. But there are certain emotions that are the same in characteristics between the two of us and we will feel resonant with each other. We will feel attracted to each other on those particular emotions. If you can think of God as being this huge simulator of emotion throughout the universe, every, in fact, every living creature and even every inanimate object has a certain frequency and a certain emotion and certain um, characteristics that God always feels. And your soul is the highest of those creations, and so your soul is the thing that he is most sensitive to. He's sensitive to absolutely every single child that he has ever, ever created. Every soul, God is just as sensitive to as every other soul. And that's why we can say that God is impartial, without partiality. Because your soul and my soul, from God's perspective, are identical in the sense that your soul and my soul, God can feel to the same intensities. It doesn't mean that your soul and my soul match each other in their emotions, or their desires, or their passions. But God can feel them. So God's there feeling and resonating with certain emotions that only God herself has. So if there's an emotion in me like, I want to die, and there's an emotion in God that God feels that life is supreme, then obviously my emotion and God's emotion are not harmonious, are they, in that state? So is God resonating with me at that point? No. And God can't <coughs> resonate with me at that point. God can feel the emotion in me, but God's soul will not resonate with me because my emotion is different to what God feels about me. When my soul begins resonating with God's soul on certain matters, that's when we start feeling the communication back from God. Does that make sense to everyone? No? We're both having the same kind of thing going on. So, for example, let's say my soul has a feeling of unworthiness in it. What does God feel about me? Well, doesn't God feel that I'm supremely worthy? I'm, according to God, I am the pinnacle of his creation. As are you. But let's just refer it as one person. So if I'm feeling unworthy, God's feeling unworthy. Is my soul resonating with God's soul now? No. So if I then act or pray about something that is a result of my unworthiness, unless it's about healing it, I'm not dealing with the cause of my unworthiness. And of course, God's soul can't resonate with me about that. 
So all God can do then is by is direct other people around me in the way that God does, and we'll talk about this a bit later. God can direct other people around me to influence me, to help me see that actually I'm worthy. But God can't actually physically connect with me because I believe I'm not worthy. Does that make sense? And God feels I am worthy. So God is feeling my emotion, but not resonating with my emotion because my emotion doesn't agree with her emotion. And so God, under those circumstances, uses everything in her power outside of the physical connection she can have with me in order to influence me to see the truth. And the truth is that I am worthy. So there'll be all sorts of events, law of attraction events, law of cause and effect events, law of conversation events, and so forth, all that will occur to try and trigger me emotionally. There'll be people coming up to me. You'll hear different things about worthiness in my life, you know. And eventually, those things will get through to me. Whether it happens here on earth or it happens in the spirit world, eventually, it'll get through to me. And when it gets through to me, my soul starts resonating with God's soul on the issue of whether I'm worthy or not. And I, in that state, now I can receive more from God. Because my soul agrees with God's soul about God's opinion of me. Does that make sense? So a lot of the times what we're doing is we're dealing with all of these issues where we are not actually feeling what God feels about us. So all disconnection between ourselves and God is caused by we ourselves not feeling what God feels about ourselves. That's what all disconnection is caused by. So what we're doing on this path of spiritual growth, the divine love path we've called it, which is the narrow way leading to life, what we're actually doing is we're learning to see ourselves as God sees us. That's what we're learning to do. And prayer is the major mechanism by which that will occur. Prayer is the only, in fact, mechanism by which your soul can receive divine love. So therefore, it's the only mechanism by which our changes can be made. Now, I'm not saying, though, that if, if God's soul doesn't resonate with our soul, that we're useless or hopeless, because we're not. Because God is constantly trying to, to connect with every one of his children through other means if they personally don't want to connect with God themselves. Does that make sense? So God is trying, even if you do not want a connection with God, God is trying as best she can with all the little laws involved, and with your attitude and condition, your soul condition inside of your heart, God is doing exactly the best that she can already do to make this connection occur at some point in the future. All that has to happen at some point is for me to come to recognize that. And so quite often it's referred to in spiritual circles that we, we come to a process of awakening. And that's really, we could use that term if we want. We're awakening to the fact that actually it's only me that's keeping myself away from God. God is not distant from you. God is right with you right now. It's just that you can't always feel God with you right now. And that's the issue we face. The reason why we don't feel God is with us right now, if that's what we feel, is because we are not connecting to God in the sense of resonating with God about God's opinion of you. In other words, your own opinion of you is in disharmony with God's opinion of you. When your own opinion of you becomes, and when I use the term opinion, I'm talking about your emotional state, not just your intellectual state, your true emotional state, has the same opinion as God's opinion of you, now you will resonate with God. And in fact, at that point, when God's opinion of you and your opinion of you match each other perfectly, you also become at one with God. That is one of the characteristics of being at one with God. So everything before then is just learning to see what we are in terms of separating from God. And prayer is the key to finding out all that. And particularly the prayer for divine love is the key. Because if I'm not receiving divine love, it's because I am out of resonance. 
I am not in harmony <coughs> with something if I'm not receiving it. And I've got to allow myself, if I want to connect to God perfectly, I've got to at some point allow myself to actually notice that that's occurring and do something about it myself, because that's my free will. So at this stage, does everyone understand how God connects to us and how you connect to God? If you can just picture it emotionally rather than metaphysically. So the way I feel about it is like I'm the child and God's the parent and every single emotion I feel, whether I'm crying or laughing or whatever I'm feeling, I'm reflecting those emotions to God. Some of those emotions are going to be resonant with God's emotions about me. And so we will have a connection. Other ones of those emotions are not going to be the same as the emotions that God has about me. And so there will be a disconnection. But I can communicate all the time those emotions, can't I? Firstly, if I do that for myself, then I'll be connected to myself all the time, which is really, really great. That's one of the first things we need to do with regard to our connection with God. But then I will also notice when I'm not getting a response. And when I'm not getting a response, I'll know, oh, my opinion's not the same as God's opinion of me. The way I feel about myself isn't in harmony with what God's feeling about me on this particular subject, whatever that subject may be. So I'll know straight away that I'm in error. Can you see that? And if I know straight away I'm in error... <coughs> then I know what I need to fix, what I need to do, what I need to feel and work my way through in order to reconnect back with God again. 